Stan Gibalisco here to talk a little bit about peak versus average power some more and to describe the process of analog audio speech compression to show you what it actually does and then to show you a little block diagram of how you might actually accomplish it. This is a graph similar to the one that I made for peak versus average audio power showing a hypothetical voice signal as a function as where power is a function of time and uh, maybe uh, there's six seconds worth of time span or something here one now well, let's mark this off one two three four five six seven well eight seconds and it's something like maybe my voice plotted as a power versus time graph notice that the peak power up here must be an awful lot greater than the average power which is something maybe down around oh down around maybe here so let's just say hypothetically that the ratio of the peak to the average power is 3 to 1 3 to 1. That means that the peak up here is three times as great as the average down here. Now, you can actually get more bang for your buck in a voice communication signal by boosting the average power without boosting the peak power. You have to be careful when you do that because it will always introduce a certain amount of distortion and you don't want that distortion to get so great that it defeats the purpose of this, the speech compression, which is to make your signal more intelligible to people on the other end of a communication circuit. More, not less. Well, how can you do that? Let's just fill these, um, fill all of this stuff in. So that we get a little, little bit more color in here. But it'll make it easier for me to show you what happens if audio speech compression is actually employed in a voice signal like this. When you have a situation like that where the peaks are much greater than the valleys, you can boost the valleys. Let's just say that you increased all of the points along this graph uh, by a factor that would tend to compress them towards the top without ever exceeding the top. Here's your actual voice function. Looks something like this. Speech compression will boost these valleys so that maybe they only go down like that. Maybe instead you'll get something with a contour something like this. Notice that the peaks are not any greater than the peak was before. But the valleys are a lot shallower. So this shaded region, this green shaded region, represents in effect the energy contained in the speech during this interval of time. The energy, the total overall energy is shown by the shaded region. Notice that the shaded region has increased in area but the peaks haven't gotten any greater and you don't have any clipping of the peaks, that is flat topping. That is a very good speech compression system and now you probably have an average power so much greater that instead of 3 to 1 maybe the ratio is 3 to 2 or 1.5 to 1 peak to average. So that's what speech uh, compression actually does. Then we take a little breather and go off somewhere into outer space and clear our minds 
to get them into the frame where I can show you a simple block diagram of a system that will do this effectively. Suppose here that you have an automatic level control system between your input and your output. Here's your microphone. Here's your audio amplifier. And here's your automatic level control. What does automatic level control do? It simply prevents the peaks from exceeding a certain maximum. That is to say, it limits the peaks. That'll keep your transmitted audio from overloading the subsequent circuits on the peaks, which can produce a whole range of very unpleasant things, including, well, overmodulation, which can lead to splatter, where you get uh, a greatly increased signal bandwidth. Here's your output. Here's your input. And there's your microphone amplifier. Now suppose that you increase the gain of this amplifier so that the weakest parts of your voice, the least strong, least loud parts of your voice are amplified. And in fact, your entire voice is amplified, but the automatic level control still limits the peaks. So the peaks can't get any greater than this automatic level control dictates that they can get. But you increase the gain of this amplifier and the result is that the average power increases but the peak power stays the same. You can do that up to a point but if you try to do it too much you're going to get an unintelligible signal here at the output because first of all the background noise like the little uh, furnace fan that you probably can't even hear in this presentation, way in the background, other little ambient noises, the sound of your breathing, the sound of other sounds that you may make that don't really come over the circuit very noticeably will, will be amplified to the point where they become as prominent as the rest of your voice and it'll almost sound like you're talking in a heavy industrial zone where all kinds of machinery is running when it's really not. You know how hard it is to understand people under those conditions? And maybe you've heard a situation like this on an amateur radio voice signal from time to time. Someone got just a little bit overzealous with their speech compression and compressed the speech to the point where the average power competed with the peak power to, and there was hardly even any difference between them, so it was just a, a kind of a roar with a voice embedded in there somewhere. Or maybe you've heard that on long-distance telephone calls, sometimes they employ this automatic level control with a lot of amplification, and someone's running a television set in the background, uh, and you're trying to talk to them, and every time that they pause, even for the briefest instant in their speech, that television set comes in and and competes with them. You ever heard that? That's too much speech compression. Speech compression has an optimum point, an optimum amount. An optimum gain for this amplifier beyond which you get past the point of diminishing returns and you end up doing nothing more than working the daylights out of the subsequent stages in your transmitter or whatever because the overall amount of energy that they have to contend with is so much greater and you're not getting any return for it. So speech compression is a tricky business. Uh, I recommend you read a lot more about that. Uh, you might want to Google on that. But I've just tried to describe here the very basic principle of it, what it 
what it actually does to your waveform and how circuits in electronics, analog circuits, can accomplish this. Digital signal processing or DSP is a whole nother ball game and a lot of transmitters these days use that method instead of the analog method. Stangibilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.